Okay guys, I want to talk about uh, cooling systems some more here. And you know, our typical hoses, here's, here's some of the problems or <laughs> places that we have leaks on cooling systems, is way over torquing of these clamps. Uh, it's, it's pretty surprising, you know, a few years ago when I noticed in a service manual that they actually had a torque spec for uh, coolant clamps in a Honda manual. It was a 954 to be exact. I remember thinking, oh, that's hilarious. Whoever torques a hose clamp, you know what I mean? And it, let's, let's be real about how that's being done. It's a great idea to not over, uh, over stretch the hose. If we look at this hose here, we could see it's frayed. I'll pass this around. Uh, this is just a bad deal. I mean, if you see hoses like this, it's going to deteriorate, it's going to break. The other thing is we want to check and see if the hose is pliable. Even though that these are formed hoses, meaning that we didn't bend this, you bought this hose in this shape, it's, it, this one here is still pliable. Do you see that? I could still kind of squeeze that. This thing is, is pretty rock hard around here. It doesn't have any bend to it. It is just going to fail. It would be a good idea just to get rid of this hose. The other thing I want to talk about is a lot of our hoses will have these springs on here. Have you guys seen these before? Yep. Okay. And a lot of people do. They take them off, especially because they get rusty and crappy looking or whatnot. The whole idea of this is it's by something that they're thinking they want to be protected. These are really nice in the event of a laydown or an accident because it'll potentially stop that hose being pierced and then dumping all the coolant on the ground. Does that make sense? So anytime, you're gonna see fuel lines with these as well. If you can put these back on, I highly recommend it. You know, leave these uh, hose protectors on there. Um, hose clamps like this, I mean, I say throw them away, they're junk. Okay. I hate these type of cheap clamps. I'd go to a hose clamp and call it a day. One thing you'll notice too, is that on the installation of these, you guys remember for our two-stroke dirt bike class, how we said it's always nice to duplicate where it rode before. Uh -huh. If I clamp this way over here, I, yeah, I'm, or I'm going to basically uh, not have a good a clamp because I'm not really around the nipple that this is being inserted into. So, and when I say nipple, I'm talking about this right here, you know, this edge on there. So I want to be fully insert it on there so that I can get a good clamp and that I'm larger over here and that I'm not going to have a leak. So types of places we would look for leaks is, is right there. So there's a couple of things on hoses that I think are taken for granted is tightening. What about taking these off? You know that one large pick that's about, it's not quite a 90, it's more like a 45 that's in your toolkit. Yep. We want to get in here and basically walk that around to try and remove that. Um, I highly recommend lubricant. Let me model how I would want this to be taken off to have the minimal amount of um, minimal amount of problem here. Okay, so you've taken your hose clamp off and you're getting ready to do this. Can you hold this for me? Can I support that? So this is on a bike. I know we're in a goofy angle here, whatnot. Here's what I recommend you do. You're going to get underneath here like this, lift this up, and then spray in there. And then watch what I do with the pick. If I do that, I'm going to go ahead and jack this up. You see how easy that is to, to tear through? Oh, yeah. Okay, I don't want to go that direction. I'm not going up. I'm going this way, okay? And then I'm going to walk it around. You see how I do that? I'm going to walk that around. And what's going to happen is I'm going to break the dried seal because was there ever any lubricant on there? No, not. And when you install it, do you want a bunch of lubricant? No. No, because I want a good tight seal on there, okay? So then once I've walked around with my radiator tool. That's what this is called, is a radiator pick tool. And then I would then take this and rotate it back and forth and as I'm rotating it, pull it off. Does that make sense? Yep. If you do that, you're gonna be, you're probably not gonna damage these. It, you might say to yourself, I'm done, thanks. You might say to yourself, oh, a radiator hose has gotta be cheap. When you go to O'Reilly's or AutoZone, formed ones are not. These guys are expensive. How much, your price on motorcycles? Expensive. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So we and that's where people go and they say, I'm not gonna pay forty bucks, so I'm just gonna put a hose on from O'Reilly's or whatnot. And when you take a hose that is not formed like this and it's this short, when you try to bend it, what happens is it flattens out. And when this flattens out, that hose isn't meant to run like that. It's going to get hot and it's going to kink and it's going to restrict flow and it's usually going to blow something off or have a leak. So no choice there.
<laughs> What's the popular thing in uh, motocross and the sport bike world on radiator hoses right now? On uh, the sport bike and dirt bike world, it's colored hoses. And, oh, you, yeah. and you can buy a whole kit pretty inexpensive compared to OEM. So there's, a, there's an option. All right, next thing I'm going to talk about are radiator caps. There's, there's no value into the size of this. This is strictly due to the age of the bike and the year. The older bikes did have these large radiator caps. Honda put a, a bunch of these on here and uh, they just had a, a larger inlet to fill it. But as the bikes got lighter to save, you know, to be able to have better gas mileage and so on, we ended up going into filler necks, uh, something like this that's just smaller on here. So you, it doesn't matter, you can't interchange them, but what I want you to know is every radiator cap out there has a rating on it. So I've got a couple here to show you, and it actually tells us the metric rating. Do you see where it says 0.9? Mm -hmm. Okay, and this one says 1.1. Okay, we'll have to look those up, but I'm pretty sure that the 0.9 I think is like either 13 or 15 PSI, and then the 1.1 is uh, I think 17 to 19 PSI. So we're going to talk about what that means, but listen to me. A lot of guys go down because cars have started getting these smaller ones now. This used to be 50 bucks, 50 plus. And uh, I remember years ago, the Honda guys that would come to my shop on the Gold Wings and whatnot, they would always laugh because, like the Honda Acra radiator cap was I mean, 12.95, and the same exact thing in a Honda wrapper for a Gold Wing was like 50 bucks. And so, you know, a lot of those guys talk and figure things out or whatnot. Well, a guy came in and, and showed me that one time, and I had pointed out, hey, you have the, the wrong radiator cap. Oh, no, it'll work. All the forums say it works. Well, the one that he got from the auto world was not of the same pressure rating. So if his cooling system was rated at 17 PSI and he puts a 15 PSI cap, he has lowered the boiling point of the antifreeze in there. Okay, so it moves the system out of operation. We'll get into those numbers here a little bit uh, better later on. All your American stuff, we're going to find that uh, we're gonna, all our tools and everything are going to be rated at a, an American PSI because that's what we can relate to. We can't relate to 0.9 or 1.1, right? So radiator caps have an have a intentional value. This is a tool uh, by Stant, most popular. This is an automotive tool with the uh, motorcycle and small radiator cap applications. And what we get here is a way to... So if, if we look in here, do you see where it says the cap? And it says 9 to 11 PSI, 13 to 14, 15 to 16, and so on? Yeah. So what that is, is we're going to be able to pressure test caps, and we're going to be able to pressure test radiators and see if they hold their design pressure. So that's what we're going to do today here. This doesn't have the metric conversion on there, so I can't, uh, can't tell you which one it is. Like I said, I think it's 15, and I think it's like uh, 17 to 19 on the different PSIs. Well, why don't we just start with uh, testing a cap here. Now, let's, we need to look at the radiator cap a little bit more. This has a lot of function to it. You guys are probably familiar on your motorcycles and your cars with having some type of reservoir or a yep. coolant tank. So the, what happens is, and you can see the upper and lower level here, as the engine get, is hotter and colder, has anybody ever filled this before and as you fill it, it says uh, upper level hot and upper level cold? Okay, so it, it has that room to grow in there. So as your engine uh, gets hot, the radiator system sucks down a little bit and it sucks some fluid out of here to keep the system full. And as the system gets cold, that fluid pushes back into this tank. Okay, but we said that our radiator systems are sealed, right? Everybody agree with that? And how, that's, how that gets back to the tank is out of this little hose right here. Do you guys, you see this uh, extra nipple on this radiator? Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a common one of those lines that would go down to like that oil cooler I showed you on that Ninja. Okay, so, or it might go to carburetors. Okay, somewhere where they're gonna put antifreeze. Didn't you have carburetor antifreeze lines on your snowmobile? It, this is probably an area like it'd be coming from, okay? So the small one here, and you always know it's right by the cap, okay? The small one by the cap is how the fluid gets there, but if you look, we're sealing this cap down in here against that, and you're thinking, well, how could the fluid ever get backwards? Okay, I'm gonna show you how that will, and this is another place for radiator caps that are inspected. Check this out, once you guys get in here, do you see how I can actually open this? Mm -hmm. 
there's another low tension spring in here that under vacuum when the radiator fluid drops this spring opens up and allows coolant to come from the reservoir from that plastic tank above here out here and into the radiator okay and that will go through this hole right here okay so that is is what that's for that's something that's not checked guys for the prices these are today this is pretty cheap to just go ahead and replace these here's another problem is if I have a customer that's running a bike that won't heat up or a bike that's overheating I don't care which way and I go in and I just say oh it must be the cap or it must be the thermostat don't we really need to find out what's wrong yep. absolutely so when people test these they fail them a lot and here's the problem is they're just plain dirty have you guys ever pulled radiator hoses where there was a bunch of corrosion around them? Mm -hmm. That goes throughout the whole vehicle because aren't we supposed to use distilled water? Yep. And on motorcycle systems or anything with an aluminum block, this is Auto World 2, we are supposed to use an antifreeze that is silicate free. In the brown cabinet out there, will you go get me one of the jugs of antifreeze? It's in a gold, uh, it's in a gold jug on like the bottom shelf. Thanks, George. Cool. Um, so the silicate free antifreeze has been around forever in the motorcycle world that's why bike shops are always selling honda or suzuki antifreeze it was pretty expensive now that the auto world has all these uh you know aluminum blocks uh, we see it all the time in the auto world so if you use distilled water and the right antifreeze we don't have near the corrosion buildup or the water pump seals that go out or things like that so what about the 50 50 mix stuff? it's it's still a 50 50 mix but we're supposed to mix it with and if, or with distilled water, nobody does it. Everybody uses tap water because it's so convenient. Just point over it. Yep. If it's already 50-50 mixed. You mean uh, because <coughs> it's already ready to go? Yeah. Is usually good then? Or? Yeah, you got to look for silicate free. I'm going to show you this right here. See on, we'll use the camera first. See where it says silicate and phosphate free? That is a, that is a motorcycle. Really, guys, it's aluminum block is the big thing on that. So you see that silicate free. So whether it's 50-50, it doesn't matter. It just can't have the silicate in it. Okay, the silicate's what, I guess, shoot up water pump seals and, and uh, I, I don't know. It's like sand of something, I think. So it's an abrasive, okay? So you want the silicate free. Most places have gone to this type of antifreeze. I'm gonna show you guys how to test this in another lab here in a second. So let's look at this cap. Here's where the fail is. I'm gonna take in a, I'm going to use this adapter here and what I recommend is that you lubricate the o-rings here okay if you don't what will happen is these can you know get a dry spot and spin on you and then do you see how there's ramps on here Yep. okay so this is real simple uh, this it, you know you can make these last forever you buy it once there's a stopping point did I force that on there mm -hmm. no not at all and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of lubricate this up I want to do the same thing on my cap and I think this is where I've had plenty of people come up and be like, oh, it's bad. And it's like, no, it's not. We still are going to have an overheating problem. When you put these on, we have to compress it and then rotate it around. And we end up landing on another stop there. So we're compressing that spring. Now all we simply do is with our radiator cap here, let's say that this is a, this was the 1.1, right? Yep. I think that's 17 PSI. We would want to really use the manual. I'm going to go ahead and try and pump this up and look at is that cap bad? Yeah. It just keeps draining right down. I'll go ahead and pump that back up again so you can see that. I try and get up there and it just drops down. The cap, is the cap bad or is my tool bad? Could be either or. So do you think to test this I could spray soapy water around here? Yep. If I'm leaking on my tool, and here, look at the points of this. I mean here, I mean here. I mean, here, when we pulled this out, it was dirty and nasty because somebody dropped it. I mean, here, I mean, here, so you do the soapy water test because no matter what, you get the new cap and test again. If the tool's the problem, well, you're going to you're gonna fail again, okay? So we would want to test our tool. You know, a great way to do this test, uh, submerse it. Have a bucket of water that you oh, could yeah. just put this under. Pay attention here, guys. I could fill this up with water. And just you know, set this in here. And this, if I'm pumping that, if that tool's leaking, it's going to uh, push bubbles. Right. We want a zero leak because we want to be able to hold this. Now, per your service manual, they're going to say something like one psi of loss every hour or six minutes. I don't remember who. You know, one way or another, we don't want them to leak. Right. So you're going to want to look at your service manuals. I honestly don't have it remembered on how much loss. Here's what I do. 
I take and I, I think about my diagnostic as I'm doing things. If I know that I have to test a radiator system, I'll hook this up and let set for a couple hours. A good cap can sit overnight. Okay, it won't leak at all. So if I come back after lunch or something or halfway through the day and I check this and it's not leaking, is it good? Yep. It's good. Then I would go and I would do the radiator test. I'm going to show you here in a second and I would verify that the radiator will sit and hold pressure for you know, a few hours or, or so on. And like I said, every manual out there gives you exact specifications. Make sense? So of the system here, this small one is the adapt. This is the whole motor. These are the motorcycle adapters you'll see to test the small ones. If I was doing just the large one, I would simply do this. I'd go ahead and put this on. I'll just go ahead and do a dry test here. Put that on. <coughs> Leaking? Yeah. Is there a chance that most of the ones I have are bad? Oh, yeah. You know, because of, of what we have here for our supply. So let's do uh, let's do this real quick. Okay, had a little pressure in there. Did you hear it pop? You never open a radiator hot. No. And uh, George, you got a pretty bad horror story on that. Oh, look at that! Would that even be worth up? testing? Yeah. Probably not, but why not? A little sandpaper. Uh, do you want to eat antifreeze? No, 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 probably not. Most of it's dog safe and friendly now, but I, I don't think I'd recommend doing that. So. All right, let's, uh, let's hop in here. <laughs> Go ahead and uh, this is a 1.1 again. Okay, higher, the higher pressures are definitely going to be more higher performance related. RC51. It's dropping. It's dropping pretty, pretty slow, but it held. Do you see how it was probably that had too much pressure and it was relieving itself? Up to the point to where it was. So this cap right now says it's a 1.1 and it's holding about, you know, right about 16 PSI. It was pretty close to here. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Good stuff. All right, we'll get the one off the truck. Okay. Let's, let's uh, switch gears here and we're going to just go ahead and move to the motorcycle here behind us. So we're going to need this one. Here's something I want to point out on this. Let's see if it has them in here. Mm -hmm. This here moves up and down here, and I could tell that some of the washers, sometimes you can have two washers on here, and I don't see it in the kit. Be, wouldn't be shocking if it was missing or whatnot, but this this really needs some uh, some maintenance here so that we can get this to uh, to seal up here. Okay. The other thing is when we're dealing with the antifreeze, the antifreeze ends up being pretty uh, pretty dry, right? Yep. So I don't want to even be messing around with my aluminum radiator here and having a problem. So I'm trying to just get this to uh, to work right now. So let's turn around here. We'll get on the motorcycle. Now remember how that little crap of uh, that was you know pushing off the cap? Yeah. So it's around here right now. So that's you know that's not good either. So. We would need to thoroughly clean this and then we'd want to figure out what's going on. But all this is going to do is this is going to adapt us to be able to fit our large, our large one on there. Does that make sense? And then we take our tool, simply put it on here. Can somebody hold that for me and I'll have you pump it up in a second. There's another thing on this tool and this is a relief that will pop the pressure before you take the cap off. So you don't just pop it. So then I'm going to take this, I'm going to get it nice and tight. See how that's free here? Go ahead and I'll build some pressure. That's good. You'll wait way too much. Look at how you went into the red. Okay. Okay. This one here, I'm going to build, bleed some of that pressure off. Go ahead and give it some pumps here. You hold it. So I don't want to go over whatever the rating is. Makes sense? Now this drop down, it, it bled off a little bit and it seemed to really hold itself yeah, I don't know, about 18 PSI. That's, that matches up with the cap, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But you know what I do, like I said, let go. I just go ahead and, and set this on here nice and walk away and do some other work. If I was leaking, what I would do is spray uh, uh, soapy water around the tool to verify that. I would go to all the hoses. I would go to the radiator itself to try and figure out what's going on uh, with this uh, with this motorcycle and this motorcycle has twin radiators and quite an extensive cooling system of hoses that hooks across 
Does that make sense? So let's uh, let's go look at a radiator. Kind of wrapped up there. Here's a radiator. It's been damaged, and this was from an accident. And uh, and you guys that are entry level might not realize that this curved radiator is not actually damaged because of the curve. Okay, what this was, was on our motorcycles, this was a big advancement that as we started making more power and more power, we needed bigger radiators. The more horsepower, the more heat to remove, right? Yeah. You can look at any uh, engine out there and see the smaller they are, smaller radiator, and they'll just keep making it bigger and bigger. Well, what they did is, the so this, this came off, I think, a 600cc motorcycle, and as they increased the power, they couldn't keep making it wider this way and they couldn't keep making it wider this way because it just cosmetically, they were trying to make the bikes more narrow, right? So what they did is they curved it so that the front wheel and the forks can tuck in here. Does that make sense? And I mean, the, the front wheel doesn't directly come in contact with this, but just an overall design of the motorcycle to be able to have that curve in there, um, increase the capacity. The difference of this being straight or curved might have been about 20% because of the sections it was allowed to be able to add on to the side of it. Pretty cool. And on this one, here, here's another thing you could do. You do not have to have the motorcycle to test the radiator. What you do is just take a hose and put it on both of your lines and you'd plug them with like a large bolt or maybe machine up an aluminum plug or something. Plug the radiator inlet and outlets. If you have any of these, they would have to be plugged. Well, this one would have to be plugged. And then you can use your tool and pressure test it. And on this radiator, that's what we did. And we could see here, our fins look like they were damaged. You could see this is smashed down. That does not make the radiator bad. Okay, if coolant is still able to go through here, if it just smashed the fins, it's reduced its overall ability to r reduce heat because every bit of this would equal 100% of cooling capability, right? right? This little area that's smashed right here, I would not at all be afraid to use this radiator on a street bike, okay? That little reduction right there, I still have all this. What deemed this radiator bad is where, uh, where the line was pierced right here because water comes in, it goes through here, 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 here. You can see here it actually severed it. So this radiator was junk. There was nothing you could do about it. This little smash right here. These are aluminum and they're pretty thin. If you're ever, tr do, do me a favor. If you're ever trying to put one of these on, the customer's like, hey, I got a crash bike. I, I, I don't want to spend the four or $500 for a radiator. If I'm going to tell you right now, if you start bending these brackets, you're going to break them off. Okay, you cannot bend this back. In that case, I would make an additional bracket to mount it to the bike uh, or make your customer buy a radiator one, one way or another. You make sense? Of this, this is so fragile here, it'll just rip it open. Okay, when they're made there, they're very hard to straighten and bend around. I've seen some of the craziest radiators look like they're just twisted and all bent up and they don't leak and they don't cause the bike to have any heat, overheating issues. They will work fine. Our big thing is, can it hold fluid? And uh, if there is some big reduction, how much are we willing to lose? You know, a bike like this on a race bike, I don't know if I'd want to lose this this you know this ability, but I'll tell you what, I'd probably at four hundred dollars I'd probably go out and ride the bike and read the gauge and see if it overheats. You know what I mean? So there's some examples there. How are we doing so far? Good. Crash course. I got one other thing that's kinda of handy. You talked about the black light here. The antifreeze is so dang green that this is this is just from a flea market that if you turn the lights off and kind of shine the light around the antifreeze, you can buy special dyes that you put into the antifreeze that will, uh, when you put a black light on them, they will really like super glow. But on our motorcycles, we don't have as much problem like a car does where you can't see everything. So they really need those dyes to get down around a block and look at things. The antifreeze for us tends to be extremely obvious because we just got to pull some body work off. With one of these black lights and just antifreeze alone, it will tend to typically make it glow. Okay. Another thing that I've done to look for leaks that have been real troublesome is to go and spray baby powder all over the, the inspected areas. Uh, I got a, a video on the RC51 where we just baby powdered it like crazy trying to figure out where the leak was because we had a really super small leak. It'd take about two days for it to develop. And then uh, with the baby powder, we were obviously able to see right where it got wet because when it would drip 
off the motor, it would roll sideways, hit a pipe, roll this way, and it, it just was so deceiving to try and figure out where it was. When we made everything wet and kept going and looking at it every hour, we were able to pinpoint exactly where that leak was.